In this screen screencast, we're going to talk about phonemes and allophones. Now, this discussion of um, phonemes and allophones is in the sub-area of linguistics called phonology. And phonology is all about contrasts and positional variation. Now, when sounds, um, when there's a difference in sound, like in cap and tap, Notice how they, both of these words have three sounds, uh, initial consonant, the same vowel, and the same final consonant. But there's a difference in that initial consonant, k for cap and t for tap, and that difference results in a different word, right? If we are saying cap or tap, it all depends on that initial sound, and that results in a different word. So when this happens, when there's a contrast, we see that these sounds um, represent different phonemes. Uh, different sounds, different meanings, and we call these minimal pairs. Whenever we find a minimal pair, we know that we have found sounds that represent different phonemes. So in English, it's important to specify which language we're talking about because this is not cross-linguistic. There'll be differences in different languages, but in English, k and t represent different phonemes. Now, k and t are not just in those two words, right? They're in lots of words. And whenever we see or, or hear or say the k sound, we generally accept that as the same sound, right? In cap, cat, cup, tack, cool, tick, all of those, right? We, we generally see those, if we, we hear those as the same sound. So we say that in English, we have the phoneme k, and this is the notation for a phoneme. It's the uh, slashes. We, we write it in slashes. So English has the phoneme k, but there are differences in pronunciation when we're actually speaking. It, but not every difference in pronunciation results in or leads to a difference in meaning, leads to different words. Now let's focus on this word a little bit. Um, I've uh, picked this word because it only has two sounds, right? We the initial consonant and the vowel, ku. Now, you really have to say it out loud and try to feel where your tongue hits the roof of your mouth. Ku, ku. Now, k is the voiceless. Your vocal folds are not vibrating, which you can feel if you touch your Adam's apple or the top of your head. And it's velar, meaning that the back of your tongue is touching the squishy part at the back of the roof of your mouth. It's where it gets soft, the soft palate it's sometimes called. And it's a stop, um, also called a plosive, because to, in order to make the k sound, you have to build up a little air pressure and then l pop it, let it re release. Ku. Do you feel that? Okay, now let's say this word. Now, native speakers would say that this has the same sound, right? Ku and ki. But you really have to say it to try to recognize the difference between phonemes and allophones. Now, say ku, then ki. Ku, ku, ki. Ku, ki. Do you feel that your tongue moves forward a little bit? Ku, ki. So, in the IPA, in the International Phonetic Alphabet, the, the sound we make when we're saying the word key is actually a different symbol. It's represented by a different symbol, what we actually pronounce. But any native English speaker would say that those two sounds are both the same. They're both the K, right? So that's what this means. We have native speakers understand this as the same sound, the same abstract idea of the same sound, but sometimes we pronounce it as k and sometimes as k. Ku, ki. Ku, ki. There's also a different vowel, but that's important, right? 
the um, when we have the when we produce it with a front vowel like e, e, the velar instead of push uh, pronouncing it with the tongue at the very far back of the roof of your mouth, it moves a little forward because we're anticipating going forward for the front vowel. Ku, ku, ki. Do you feel your tongue moving forward? So that's what we mean by per positional variation. The phoneme k in English sometimes um, be, uh, occurs, shows up as this symbol, right? Almost like a k, but it's more k, k instead of k, k. I know that's hard to hear. You're going to have to feel it. And that shows up before front vowels where the k sound occurs everywhere else. Again, as native English speakers, we think it's the same sound. Um, so we can, that's why we consider it the same phoneme. But there are really, those two sounds are allophones of that single phoneme in English. So if you want to find out if something's an allophone or a phoneme, you think about if the sounds do not cause a difference in meaning, if the distribution is predictable and complementary, like we saw with the uh, phoneme k, we, we can predict where the other variant's going to be. And we also expect the sounds to be phonetically similar, right? Because um, we wouldn't want it to be completely different. We just had one little change. It just moved a little bit forward in the mouth, but the voicing and the manner stayed the same. So if you have all those things, those, those sounds are allophones of the same phoneme. In allophones, if it helps, you can just think of them as sounds, right? Those sounds, what's actually being produced, belong to the same phoneme. But if there, the difference in sound results in a difference in meaning, those sounds are allophones of different phonemes, right? So they're different. They're still sounds, but they represent different phonemes. Um, another way you might want to think about this, this is the fancy definition from Ziga, is that a phoneme is a label for a set of sounds that all count as basically the same sound, right? It's a family of sounds. Um, they should have family resemblance, but um, they, and, but you can, if you try real hard, you can see those differences, right? Okay, so the phoneme is the abstraction, the idea in our minds of what counts as the same sound, but the phonemes are the sounds that, w that are actually produced when we speak.